Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out a crazy little physics based platformer called Ride Jumper by developers Kevin Zoon, Tom Eastman, and Jamie Sanchez. Uh, the premise is, and it's a, a very simple game but quite a well done one from what I've seen, essentially what we're going to be doing is jumping from ride to ride in a Sky Island based theme park with the idea to ride every ride available within two minutes. Uh, and we'll try and not, you know, splatter into an island and turn into a pile of blood and gore, or fall off into the void along the process. So essentially all we have to do is use spacebar and left and right for air control. It's quite simple that way. Uh, but like I said, it's kind of cool to see how they work the different various physics-based uh, rides into things. And oh, I like the little touch of the balloons as well as we get to each ride. It's like, oh, you're on that one. Isn't that fun? Uh, Alright, so that was the first level, made up of three Ferris wheels. Simple. Okay, now we've got a slightly different setup. We've got two Ferris wheels and then like a pirate ship, and that's what happens when you mess up. Uh, yeah, not unlike real life exactly. And oh, it leaves the blood splatter there for you to remember the mistake you've made. Um, it might be tempting to think that maybe you could try and speedrun your way through a level by just skipping a certain ride. Can't do that. Uh, yeah, like I said, you've got to ride every single ride or you just don't get credit for the level when it finishes. We're actually running out of time, so I better hurry up and jump to this final ship. Ah, the park closed. I was in the middle of the air. What's going to happen to my body? Am I just going to be suspended forever in the air? All right, I guess I got to kind of speed things up. Oh, I missed. All right, fair enough. Let's try that again. I'm kind of curious to think like how this could really be scaled to be like a much fuller featured product and I, I think the premise by itself right now, oh that was terrible, uh, of just basically judging trajectories and trying our best to just like, you know, find a creative way to land is a lot of fun by itself. So what if you had just like an endless configuration of various roller coasters and just like even more rides in different ways. Uh, maybe with multiple moving parts that you need to find your way across, or maybe there could even be like bandages, sort of Meat Boy style. I really like the roller coaster, by the way. Look at look at the freaking momentum you get as you get around uh, the right edges here. Let's yeah, let's use that like that. Oh god, I can't quite make it. Now oh, perfectly wrong that timing. Oh, managed to catch myself on the underside of that roller coaster, and I'd like to know the backstory. Oh, that was brilliant. Landed perfectly into that front car. Uh, the backstory of how, oh, so close, how it's possible, oh, it just gave me credit anyway, apparently, so that's fine. We've got two out of seven, oh, see, this is exactly what it's talking about. This totally utilizes the momentum in a creative way, and kind of lets you really go nuts with the whole thing. All right, there's a lot of weird theme park rides that exist in the world, and I think there's a lot of potential for uh, velocity boosting in various ways. Oh, that was bad. All right, that's okay, we can save ourselves. Now, what if there was, like, a, a G meter as well? Like, you couldn't go above a certain level of Gs or your character would just, like, be decapitated or something. I mean, I don't really think that's how that works, but <laughs> it would be quite creative if that also happened. Just to add to sort of the, uh... Oh, don't go off the ceiling. Uh, the kind of, like, Tory Bash level, like, fusion of calming and violence happening at the same time. Yeah. I still kind of feel like I cheesed that other one, so... I don't know, I don't feel too good about it, but... At least we're able to show off some different areas. Oh, that ground is not so good. Perfect. Oh, the rides are getting a little bit weird now. Oh, no! I also really appreciate the attention to detail as it pertains to the backgrounds. Uh, I wasn't necessarily expecting that things would look as well-polished as they do. Uh, not for any particular reason. Honestly, the developers have given me no reason to believe that things wouldn't be well-polished, but... Um, I guess I just figured the premise would be kind of the central conceit, and honestly, they've kind of gone above and beyond on that. Um, there isn't really much of anything in the way of sound effects, so uh, that could be a thing. But at the same time, we're taking the sort of Meat Boy approach to things, where uh, it's more about just kind of like being in the moment and not really thinking too hard. Uh, oh, I uh, screwed it up. Um, and just really having the music continue on makes each death or each mistake not feel quite as impactful or bothersome which is great from a usability perspective to not have to really, you know, feel too bad or linger on a mistake. It just keeps you going, and, you know, you want to provide as little friction as possible for the game uh, in general. And uh, having really simple controls helps with that as well. There's almost nothing you really have to do. I imagine if you're really good at this, you could probably remove the air control from the game entirely and still be able to do it successfully, uh, just based on momentum alone, which might be like a hard mode or something. Uh, although I think that probably they should adjust the uh, timer to reflect the extra time you'd need to really, you know, balance the angles properly. 
For the first two jumps, I think I did without actually touching my character. Oh, no! Okay, so some of the ground you can land on, some of it you can't. That's kind of an important bit to differentiate. Uh, it's not totally obvious to me which parts of the ground are actually collidable, but it looks like things that are sort of disc-shaped uh, fall into the background territory, whereas things that are more like an island with, like, terrain formation, actually, that stands as actual rock that you can hit. Oh god, the momentum was insane there. Um, there's no way that that character should have lived, by all accounts. Oh, we've, we're gonna do it. Look at that pretty moon in the background, isn't that lovely? I might like to hear just, like, the fireworks going off every now and then, just because that seems like a thing that there would be a sound effect for. Uh, maybe just, like, a little wee or something, like, when the character flies through the air, but that could also get kind of annoying, so, I don't know. It might just be the right amount of stuff going on, just as it is already. And apparently this was designed for a game jam, I think it was called the Train Jam 2015, which I was not aware of, actually. There's still plenty of game jams that pop out that uh, I'm not familiar with that just show up out of nowhere, and uh, I feel like I'm missing out. There's so many freaking cool games that come out of these things. I was trying to actually go back down, but now I've wasted all my time. Oh, I've got to go through eight rides? Do the two cars count as a different ride each? Probably not. I would guess. Yeah, that was the most meandering, ridiculous way to get to that. Oh, well, park's closed. What can you do? Let's see if we could just beat this one more level. I can see this being a lot of fun also to embrace, like, a community content aspect as well. Like, this seems like a really good game to have a built-in level editor and, like, a level portal or a creation mechanic of some kind, and maybe you could, like, judge each other's levels and, you know, create chapters or, or your own set of theme park constraints, maybe just have uh, backgrounds be editable. I understand probably the animations and such would be a little difficult to uh, keep properly curated, but as far as, like, maybe keeping it that there's a number of themes that you could make, and then have the backgrounds themselves be changeable, and then just have the rides hopefully just, like, palette swap, if necessary, to fit into whatever theme you're trying to make. I should really just kill myself, because this is not going to happen this amount of time left. I could also see it, and this seems like a bit of a stretch maybe at first, but a an adversarial uh, multiplayer element also, that maybe you're meant to tag as many of the rides as possible in a certain amount of time, and then whoever has the most rides tagged by the end, sort of like that Tony Hawk multiplayer match, uh, would be the winner. And you're both launching from different sides of the park, so maybe, you know, you have a different opportunity based on where you start. Um, or, you know, you could even go crazy with the thing and have there be unlockable characters with various attributes. Uh, maybe one of them is particularly floppy, and you can use that to sort of leverage better momentum. Or there's a character that exceeds, uh, you know, in some specific way. Maybe they are better at jumping off certain rides. Or maybe even just has, like, a, a tiny jetpack or something like that. That could be fun. Uh, it seems like a lot of different options to take this in. Um, and then, of course, there's always the crash mode element where you try and do as much damage to your character as possible, uh, but that would involve adding a whole, like, skeletal system and, you know, damage modeling and such, which is probably a little beyond the scope of things. Right here, it seems like we're just kind of focused more on, uh, you know, a binary alive-dead state, something like that. Um, that ride messes me up a little bit. I think I've been way too late launching myself off of it. One more. Get it on the up. And there. All right, that'll get us over the Ferris wheel. Ferris wheel gets us immediately to the roller coaster. Roller coaster, we need a lot of momentum off of that. I should probably have waited through the loop-de-loop -loop because I need to go quite far. I feel like I'm getting better at the beginning. Oh, the other thing that's obvious that needs to be added if you're going to, you know, fully flesh this out. Definitely need speedrunning potential and some way to compare uh, times and scores uh, on a leaderboard. That's really a thing. That definitely should happen with this, because I could see people wanting to race through these, having as little time touching each surface as possible. Uh, it could be quite a bit of fun. Also, you know, perhaps unlockables, cosmetic junk like that. Um, you know, the ability to change the color of your character, add different hats and all of that stuff. Just would serve as sort of an alternative of something to do in each area. You know, maybe you've taken a very an odd route through some of the uh, rides, and there could be, you know, unlockables that are hidden off the beaten path. Uh, which would actually encourage a little bit of exploration, which adds a whole other element since it's timed. All of a sudden there's some replayability, because maybe you miss some stuff. I don't know, that seems like a lot of fun in the structure. It's sort of like Super Meat Boy, where there's chapters with different themes on each world. 
I don't know, maybe I've gotten way too far ahead of myself with this idea, but I don't know, I really like this game. It seems really good to me. Anyway, it seems like I've gotten myself a bit stuck here on this particular level. I don't think it's necessarily as hard as I'm making it out to be. I just had really bad luck timing myself when it comes to this roller coaster. Should be able to grab it on the up and want to flip right through there. Ah, oh, see, I can't get enough momentum. I gotta start the jump earlier, probably. I would imagine, like, right as I'm coming off the top of the peak could be the right way to go. Also, that Ferris wheel is reminding me of the Borderlands logo a little bit, which is funny. Um, I don't know, tangentially related in no way at all. Anyway, well, that's what tangents are, isn't it? Uh, that's gonna do it for today's episode. Ride Jumper, it's real cool, you should play it. It's actually available for free. You can play right in your browser. Uh, if you have a browser that supports... Is this Unity? I'm not actually sure. It feels like Unity to me. Uh, but I had no trouble uh, at all playing it. There have been no issues really as far as bugs other than just that one level that accidentally skipped uh, because it thought I hit the win condition, but I hadn't. You know, whatever. It's a little minor thing. Uh, but yeah, it's really fun. I recommend this game wholeheartedly. It's, uh, it's kind of pleasant and hypnotic while also being fun and addictive, and, you know, it doesn't need to be super heavy-handed. It's just a nice, simple premise, easy to play, very accessible, and uh, I love stuff like that. The music keeps me coming back, too, the fact that it's so frictionless. Anyway, that's gonna do it for another episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you did enjoy the episode, make sure you leave a like on the video, and I'd love to hear your opinions if you have any comments about how you feel this game is or any of the ideas that I posed throughout the episode. Uh, feel free to weigh in on any of that stuff. I look forward to bringing you plenty more indie impressions in the future, so I will uh, see you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Have a great night.